Move forward. Where have I moved forward when I should have held back? That's a big issue for people who look like me. <laughs> Sorry so about there that. are some things that Surge is doing that I want you to know about. There's one thing coming up, and that's going to be a Facebook page that's going to give you directions to call in at lunchtime on Thursday and Friday to call into electeds and to jam their phones with a message that we want this pipeline stopped and we want these people celebrated and respected. So what you have to look for, if you can write this down and put it on your phone or do something like that, is hashtag no DAPL, right? But it's a, it's a website, I mean it's a Facebook page, right? Where is, where is the team? Okay, it's on Facebook. So what you're looking for on Facebook, this uh, before, there, it's going up tonight, is this hashtag no DAPL on Facebook, and then you're looking for lunch hour action. Okay, so if you can do that, you can be part of this, you can take a stand right now, I mean tomorrow and Thursday and Friday, and you can actually uh, participate in ways that are really important. Because we need people to hear our voices, right, saying, stop, 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 it's enough. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. I could, somebody tried to call me. Grr. Sure, and I work at 350.org, and um, on behalf of all my colleagues, we are so honored to stand here today in solidarity with the indigenous people on the ground in Standing Rock. Since 350 has started, we've been working with and learning from indigenous grassroots groups, spiritual leaders, tribal governments. And indigenous peoples have always been at the forefront of climate justice struggles. They fought for their land, water, and air before any of us even knew about the science of climate change. From the Keystone XL pipeline to the Sandpiper pipeline to the export terminals in the Pacific Northwest to Dakota Access, indigenous peoples have been at the forefront of so many fights against the fossil fuel industry. And about five years ago, 350.org joined the fight against the Keystone XL pipeline, which I'm sure many of you were also involved with. That fight was first launched by First Nations and indigenous people in Alberta who were seeing the impacts of tar sands firsthand. We helped to organize over 1,200 people to get arrested at the White House, and I'm sure some of you were there. Make some noise if you were there. At that time, nobody thought it was possible to stop such a big fossil fuel project. We were called crazy and naive, but we kept on working hand in hand with native people, landowners, and climate activists. And last November, President Obama rejected that pipeline. And here we are again. Indigenous people are leading the call to action to stop this dirty project. Because in reality, this isn't about just one pipeline. It's about indigenous rights. It's about changing the status quo. It's about making the impossible possible. It's about transitioning from an extractive economy that puts local communities, wherever they are, at risk of oil spills, water contamination, pollution, and now climate impacts like floods, storms, and droughts. And there's nobody who can better articulate that than indigenous people whose culture is so deeply connected to the land, water, and air. The indigenous people on the ground in Standing Rock call themselves protectors, not protesters. They've been on the ground since April when everyone thought that this pipeline was a done deal. At the beginning, it was just a few teepees, but when they called for people to join them, the camp grew bigger and bigger. 
as Patricia said earlier, now there are almost 200 tribes standing in solidarity to say no to the Dakota Access Pipeline. I've never felt more hopeful than I do now, looking out on all of you, seeing the photos from over 200 solidarity rallies across the country just today, right just today. Thousands and thousands of people across the country coming out to say no to this pipeline, to stand in solidarity with Standing Rock. And I'm more sure than ever that people power can not only defeat the Dakota Access Pipeline, but every other fossil fuel project moving forward. We need to change the status quo. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. My name is Tamaha Gray Eyes, and I'm from the Navajo Nation. I just, I just said my clan. I am Hashkanitsohe, which is Yaka fruit strung out in a line. I'm born for bitter water. And I think about that, you know, my connection to water through my clanship, bitter water, a place, a place where a people came, which represents my dad's side. I'm familiar with, with some of these places and these struggles, but I come from the desert. Last year, the Gold King wastewater disaster happened. It was this mine, this gold mine, called Gold King that happened in uh, near Silverton, Colorado. It was 300 million gallons of wastewater. It was the tailings <coughs> that went into the Animus River, which flows into the San Juan, which then flows into the Colorado River, which borders the northern part of my reservation. Who here was familiar with that before I even said that? That happened one year ago. My family lives about an hour away from Lake Powell, where all of that um, wastewater is going into. And I think over time, eventually, where my family is from, from this beautiful canyon, a place called Tayet, eventually, it's going to reach my family, who, who we still have um, our sheep, we still have cattle, horses, we have a huge garden that we live off of. And we live humbly too. There's another issue I want to highlight real quick, which is Oak Flat. Who here knows about that? I got to spend some, uh, some time in the San Carlos Apache Res. I used to be a teacher back when. And I got to know a lot of the leadership, especially the Apache Stronghold. If there's any folks out there, is anyone, anyone Apache wants to speak about this right now? If not, I'll break it down. So there's this thing, in uh, this sacred place, it's, it's called Oak Flat, but uh, it's about 100 miles east of Phoenix, Arizona. And it's known as this place called like the Copper Triangle. So there's a bunch of, there's a history of like copper mining there. But this special area, um, is, is a place where, where a deity for the, the San Carlos Apache came up from the earth and taught how, taught how to, to be in balance to, to everyone there. And it is also the site for the, the um, female puberty ceremony. And I got to witness that ceremony go back to that site in protest. That was a very beautiful moment to see this resurgence and resilience of Apache people. Well, this th there's this thing called Resolution Copper, and it was passed already. What it does is, they're going to use this, this technique called blockade mining. So there's the ore, and 
Oak Flat is like this jagged, rocky, beautiful area. And blockade mining hollows everything out from underneath. So eventually, the site's going to cave in on itself. That, and it's going to contaminate more of the local water. And it's very ironic that all the little mining towns around this area already get most of their clean water from, uh, from the Apache Reservation, because they haven't contaminated yet. There's deals to also, like this process, it, it takes all the water within a 20 mile radius. And so the company already has plans with Phoenix, Arizona to, to sell the water back. It's all very dirty, very nasty stuff, but um, it was very beautiful to see the leader of Apache stronghold, Winsler Nosey, go to Standing Rock and meet the leaders there. Anyways, I got a lot to talk about, and I do a lot of things. Um, meet me up later. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Aga. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am a member of the local Oromo community. Uh, Oromos, uh, we are indigenous people in the Horn of Africa. Um, I'm so thrilled to be here and I would like to thank my good friend who is also a member of, a good friend of our community um, who invited me and a few of, of, few of um, our members and I haven't heard about this event but I, I just feel truly blessed to be among you uh, who's gathered and uh, for a common good. Uh, this is, as one of our brother earlier mentioned, this is a human rights issue. It's not just a, a Native American issue, it's a human rights issue. Um, I'm here tonight um, to extend my um, support and to show my solidarity uh, to the people of uh, North Dakota and also to bring um, a message from my community elder, elders. Um, they're sending their blessing, their prayers, and, and that they are standing with you. Um, the face, the, the ugly face of multinational corporation is, is it's similar everywhere. Um, right now, my people back home, they're fighting um, uh, because they're being uh, forcefully displaced from their homeland. Uh, their sacred sites is being, is becoming a dumping ground for, um, for toxic west. Uh, our riverways are being poisoned. Um, you know, the flour you see in the, in the stores, multinational corporations, they're, it's beautiful when we see it in the flour, but you can imagine the laborers in, in my native country, uh, people work on those flour farms, um, bare hand with no protective gears and the West um, product is dumped into their river, which the people drink. Um, we need this kind of gathering. We need to stand in solidarity. Uh, in the last 10 months, uh, my people have been fighting. Uh, be about 500 people died in the last 10 months only. And these, I mean, I'm sure none of you haven't heard about it, but it's going on. You know, the, say, the face of operation, the, fa the face of uh, uh, subjugation is similar everywhere. We have to stand um, in, in unison. Um, we, my people, we're very close to, the, to, to Mother Earth. We, we, um, we have traditional laws to, to protect it. But we can't even practice those traditional skills. Um, and we do have annual water celebration 
where we go out into the river and give blessings and thanks for Mother Earth and for the water. Water is life. We call it Bishan Jireng. We have prayers for Mother Earth. I'm so struck standing here listening to all these people speaking. It, it's really, it's the same. I, I, I deeply um, in touch. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply touched. Thank you for coming out. And I, once again, I am very blessed to be part of this gathering. We have a rally um, this coming Friday here at the Federal Building, in front of the Federal Building, protesting um, the same issue, the land issue, people being displaced, um, the water issue, a human rights issue. So we are our community and you know people who are uh, standing um, in support of the human rights issue. Uh, everybody, if you can, please show up. It's uh, this Friday from from 11 to 2 at the Federal Building. Thank you again, and I appreciate everything you do. And you have my support and the support of my, my people. Thank you. My name is Charlie Davidson. I'm with the Sunflower Alliance, and I work with many of the organizations that put on this event today. Okay. Greetings. Can you hear me now? Yeah. My name is Charlie Davidson. I work with the Sunflower Alliance that works with many of the groups that put this event on today. Has anybody ever heard of the California North Dakota Access Pipeline? Its real name is Crude by Rail, which has brought mile long trains of frack North Dakota crude to the Bay Area about two years ago before Saudi Arabia flooded the market with cheap oil. Soon when the price of this oil increases, the next president will calling for, be calling for U.S. energy independence and fracking will again surge in North Dakota through as many pipelines as they can build and down Burlington Northern Santa Fe railroad tracks headed for almost any one of the Bay Area's five refineries. The, the struggle against crew by rail be had their beginning with the people of Lake Megantic, Quebec, who tragically lost 47 individuals and had their downtown incinerated in 2013 by a railroad derailment fire of back in North Dakota crude. What is so unusual about North Dakota? Among other things, there's so much propane in it that a railroad derailment fire produces fireball explosions that for a single ruptured tank car is 250 feet across and rises 600 feet into the air. Locally, this frightening California North Dakota crude by rail pipeline has two local Bay Area railroad terminals only a mile or two from BART stations. One terminal is in Richmond near the Iron Triangle neighborhood that two years ago received daily mile-long bomb trains, each having 100 antiquated tin can railroad cars called dot 111s. The other local destination for North Dakota crude is in the proposed Westpac terminal project in Pittsburgh, California, only one county away from here that has 20 million gallon tanks located existentially close to people's bedrooms. Both the Richmond and the proposed Westpac terminals are located in already pollution impacted working class neighborhoods that are mostly minority and poor. Nationally, mile long trains might soon again go right through hundreds of US towns and cities, past numerous schools and over California waterways to get to Bay Area refineries with inevitable disasters waiting to happen anytime and anywhere. Some have already called the, Calif the Dakota Access Pipeline the next Keystone XL. Unfortunately, here in the Bay Area, we already have the beginning of the Keystone XL pipeline by railroad for Canadian tar sands, the heaviest, most sulfurous, heavy metal laden, and dirtiest crude on the planet. The t these tar sands deliveries are expected to be increased eightfold to Bay Area refineries within the next decade, which will guarantee an increase in local pollution and asthma in our five local fence line refinery communities. As we speak, 
dirty creek projects are quietly being approved by the Bay Area's Air District. However, there's an important upcoming opportunity that was mentioned by Andres to protest tar sands coming to the Bay Area. Uh, please come to the Bay Area Air District next Wednesday to demand that the Bay Area Air District institute enforceable emissions caps at refineries in order to thwart this planned giant tar sands influx into the Bay Area. Check out the Sunflower Alliance online or any of the other groups here for details about the Air District, the struggles against extreme crudes, and the just transition to clean energy, and support the Standing River Rocks, or Standing Rock Sioux Reservation struggles there. And uh, please stay around when it gets dark because there's gonna be some uh, footage from uh, North Dakota. Thank you. of the speakers and I'm going to let the live stream end here uh, this has been your live streamer Freeman Sullivan thanks a lot for watching uh, remember to uh, contact your congressman if you see a petition I know that there's several groups that are sponsoring petitions sign a petition against the North Dakota access pipeline hashtag NODAPL thanks a lot and have a great evening